three out of the four um, recommendations we had, one being the storm management, since there would be a, a pretty significant increase in um, impervious area. Uh, so I'll let them touch on that as well. Uh, Mike, uh, would you like to um, uh, discuss uh, City Engineer Fordyce's memo? Yeah, I can cover it a little bit. Uh, so essentially, as Chris mentioned, we are still looking for some stormwater data as they are doing an addition to the building. Uh, as Jeff laid out in his memo, this, th these are just the uh, rules we have to follow for stormwater management process. Um, uh, talking with Jeff, we, we really don't see a major issue with this overall, but we do want to see their plans and how everything's going to handle it. Uh, just due to the size of what they're building and then their location, since they are close to a natural stream and we got all stormwater running in front of it, uh, we, we think this project is, is feasible, but we are just want to make it official with that data from them. Okay. I have a, a motion here to acknowledge the receipt of the report dated September 17, 2020 from the city planner Atkin and a memo dated September 18, 2020 from the city engineer Fordyce. Bill Beardsley, would you move that? And, and Commissioner Young, would you second that? Yes, I will move uh, to acknowledge receipt of the report from city planner Atkin as well as a memo from Mr. Fordyce. Second. Second. Katrina, would you take the vote? Commissioner Beardsley? Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearball? Aye. Chief Hart? Aye. Commissioner Hef? Absent. Mayor Morrow? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. You have seven ayes and two absent. Uh, the motion has passed. Now is the time for the act, um, applicant or the developer, if you would like to take a few minutes to uh, explain what's going on. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, my name is Dennis Loy, and I believe the doctor is also uh, connected to Zoom. Um, anyhow, the building, we are matching what's there the, uh, it has a very pretty low, file, low profile, and we're adding it has split face uh, concrete block that's been painted, and then it has a wood fascia above the block. Um, so we're pretty much carrying the exact theme of what's around the building, and the building is very nicely landscaped. Uh, it's, they've got a couple animals shaped out of the, uh, um, the planning which is, I'm sure has taken a great deal of time and uh, effort, but it is very, a very nice environment. And what we're trying to do is not detract from it, but just increase its size so that they have a better facility to accommodate the, the puppies and kittens and whatever. So um, the drainage uh, from the building currently is, has, it has internal drains that I haven't investigated, but that's what we will hire a consultant to do, is they are draining to a catch basin in the parking lot. And then from there, it is dispersed um, over the land somehow. So we need to investigate that. Uh, we will probably be adding uh, a couple drains on the roof also. And the idea was that we'd probably connect to those leaders that are in the, above the ceiling now. So we'll see how that goes and uh, We'll report and we'll provide that information on the drawings. Uh, if you have any questions, additional, I'd be very happy to answer them. Um, so that's all I have. Thank you. Um, I also hear I start. I have a motion here. There's um, I have a motion or I have a motion for uh, to open the public um, hearing. Actually, um, uh, Dan, go ahead. Scott, I have some questions. So if we have any questions, we should ask them now of the developer. Yeah, that, that would be fine. Okay. Go ahead. A quick question, because um, it's not clear and we don't have the actual drawings of the addition to the building. Where exactly will that be located in the additional parking towards the rear or to the That'd north? Be... 
There'll be four, four spaces added to the rear of the yeah. building. And the building is being added onto on the north side. Towards the front or towards the back? Uh, you will see part, uh, 34 foot of it on the, from the street. And uh, we will be landscaping it similar to what's been done. And we'll show that in the landscape plan. Okay, so the entire length of the north side of the building will be increased is what you're saying? It'll be a wider building, correct. Okay, thank you. That's it for me. Um, I guess we can move this around a little bit, Katrina. Do you want to take a roll and see who else has questions for the developer? Sure. Um, Commissioner Beardsley, do you have comments? No, no questions. Thank you. Commissioner Carroll? No question. And Councilmember Gearbaugh, did you have any additional? No, you're maintaining the tree, the big tree in front and all that, so that's not being changed, right? Correct. Thank you. Uh, Chief Hart? No questions. Commissioner Heft is absent. Mayor Marl is absent. Commissioner Troika? No questions. Commissioner Young? No questions. And Commissioner Bosick. No questions. Okay. Okay. There is a motion to open the public hearing. Uh, Dan, would you make that? Would you move that? And Dan, would you uh, second that? Which Dan? <laughs> Dan Stroika. I'm sorry. Dan Stroika. Yeah, yeah. uh, so I will move to open the public hearing. And I'll second. Very good. Commissioner Beardsley? Premier. I. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearball? Yes. Chief Hart? Yes. Commissioner Hef? Absent. Mayor Morrow? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Uh, yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. And Commissioner Fosdick? Yes. We have seven ayes and two absent. Uh, motion passed. Now, Mike or Katrina, is there anybody out there that would like to talk? Do you know? I do not show any. All right. There's a motion to close the public hearing. Commissioner Stryker, would you move that? And uh, Commissioner Carroll, would you second that? Move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. And Commissioner Beardsley? Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearball? Aye. Chief Hart? Aye. Commissioner Heff? Absent. Mayor Marl? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. You have seven the ayes and two is, absent. It is passed. The public hearing is closed. Now here, in part of my notes here, I, here's where we can ask questions by the commission uh, for Atkin, for Chris or, or Mike or anything. Anybody have any more questions? So I, I had one question. Uh, I think this is a good plan. I support it. Um, I'm just curious about in practice, how do we get the stormwater approval? Is that just going to be administrative? Who actually passes judgment on that if we approve both preliminary and final site plan tonight? Yeah, yes, sir. This is Mike. Uh, in my opinion, I think it depends on the development. Uh, bigger developments, uh, I would like probably the storm site, the stormwater details come back to you guys for review. Uh, since overall, this is more of a minor one. If you guys are okay with it and you approve it with conditions, I, I would like to see the condition of administrative, administrative approval for stormwater. And, and that's fine with me. That's what I would expect. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Beardsley, do you have any more questions? No, I don't. Thank you. Commissioner Carroll? No questions. Uh, Council Member Gearbaugh? Uh, none at this time. Okay, Chief Hart? None at this time. Uh, let's see, Commissioner Heft, Heft is out. Commissioner uh, Troika? No more. Uh, Commissioner Young? No questions. Commissioner Fosdick, no questions. Thank you all. All right, we have a motion. 
to approve or not approve with the conditions of a combined preliminary site plan for the construction of 1,032 square foot addition to the existing animal center of Saline building and an additional 720 square foot of parking lot added adding four new spaces located on a one acre lot at 7300 North Ann Arbor Street, Saline, Michigan, parcel 181336201009. Chief Hart, will you move that? And Dean Councilman Zierbaum, will you second that? Yes, and would you like the conditions spelled out or are we just gonna say with conditions? Uh, just say what conditions and you're doing this to approve it, correct? Correct. And Dean, do you second that? Yeah, move, move to approve with conditions as identified by Carlisle Wartman and the administrative review of the, um, what do you wanna call it? I, I would say approve with conditions as laid out in the Carlisle Wartman report, subject to administrative approval. Okay. I second Sounds that. Great. Katrina, would you take a vote? Yes, sir. Commissioner Beardsley? Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearbaugh? Aye. Chief Hart? Aye. Commissioner Huff, absent. Mayor Morrow, absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. Seven ayes, two absent. The uh, motion has uh, passed as, as approved. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for your consideration. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good evening. All right, we'll move on. Go ahead. Any more comments? Anything else? Okay. We'll move on to 20-16, Ordinance 819 to add a new section 6.16 to the Sling Zoning Ordinance to allow the temporary uses and structures and deletion of redundant provisions in section 5.12 and a subsection of 5.042. Mike, you want to tell us what's uh, happening here? Yeah, so I'll give you a quick little rundown. As noted in the memo, uh, Attorney Forshee is the one that came up with most of this memo as he was part of this well before I started with the city. Uh, but in summary, this is just to give the city a little bit more control over our vendor markets that happen in town. Uh, the best example is the events that happen over the summer, especially at Baker's Nook. Uh, currently, we don't have a lot of regulatory authority if they do a lot of food trucks and things like that over there. Uh, this will give us a little more power to help manage that process so it's a little win-win for each situation. So we can uh, make sure whatever's going on, either, either at Baker's Nook or anywhere else in the city, makes sense for that area, and then they follow some regulations. So that, that's what this ordinance is laying out. Okay, there's a motion um, to acknowledge receipt of the September 16, 2020 memo from Interim City Manager Mike Green. Uh, Dan Carroll, will you move that? And will Straka, would you second that? I move we accept the memo. Okay. And I, I second. Katrina, would you take the vote? Commissioner Beardsley? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Carroll? Yes. Councilmember Gearbaugh? Yes. Chief Hart? Yes. Commissioner Hess? Absent. Mayor Marl? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. And Commissioner Fosdick? Yes. You have seven ayes and two absent. Motion's passed. Um, at this time, do you guys have questions for, uh, for Mike on this uh, change? So uh, I have one question. I was looking at the, the proposed ordinance and one of the requirements for getting the, uh, the temporary permission is a site plan. Um, is that, that seems kind of extreme for like a food truck. Is that, does that mean what it says? Um, it depends on what you, your interpretation of site plan is probably what we normally see when we're dealing with developments. Uh, for this type of aspect, it's, we treat it kind of we do when people put in decks, um, if, or I mean, if you give us a driveway, 
we, we pretty much just need to see a very preliminary drawing. If, if you pulled up Google Maps and just printed that out and drew where you expected everything to go, we would accept that. All we right. pretty much just need a very general idea of where everything's going. Okay, that sounds good, thank you. Okay, also, uh, there'll be no uh, planning commission approval or now acknowledgement of any of these temporary. Correct, yeah, th this would all go through administrative staff. Okay. And Mike, can you clarify on some of the issues? So you talk about food trucks, um, some of the frequency, so like the Baker's Nook example that we talk about, um, how often, how many weekends in a row, that type of thing, which could occur. I think that was one of the concerns. Yeah, let me check real quick, see if we have that list in here. Doesn't mention food trucks. Yeah. We, we probably count food trucks as like promotional business activities. Um, but as for frequency, I, I don't think it's directly laid out in here. So it, it could potentially be an every weekend thing. Yeah, and I think that was one of the bigger concerns we were talking okay. about this um, frequency. So that might be something that council will talk about when it comes up. Yeah, okay. Mr. Chairman, if, if I could add something, I'm on the ordinance task force. Most certainly. Oh, that's right. Most certainly. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since we've looked at this, but if I'm not mistaken, there's a separate ordinance that either came out or is coming out on food trucks. And yeah, that's I yeah, I don't think right. this one was meant to govern food trucks as much as it is pop-ups and different seasonal events and that sort of thing. Thank you, Bill. Happy you were on Code, code Review Task Force longer than I've been. No problem. Yeah, I apologize. When you mentioned that, Mike, I thought it was somehow incorporated into this. <clears throat> I have a question. Is there any, uh, in, uh, under C, uh, C.4, you know, permit and inspection fees shall be set by resolution of the city council. I mean, my thought on it is, because I live on the west side of town, um, you know, he has a food truck out there two times a week, every yeah. single week. And only if it's some big food truck, you know, that, you know, that brings in like the island noodles brought in a ton of people. So yeah, it was pretty crazy over there, but like the fried vegetable truck that's here, I didn't see anybody at it today. So is there a general permit that they're allowed to get for once a season or is this every single time? Because doesn't that feel like it's trying to, um, to stifle business? I mean, if they have to apply for a permit every single time? I might have to, defer Katrina, uh, as I know the clerk's office hands this a lot, do you know how often Terry requires this? No, unfortunately I don't. I, I'm pretty sure just to, to say again, food trucks I think are covered by something else as long as they're on private property. I don't think any permit is required at all other than health department. Um, so there I think on the food truck there piece. There is a permit process. Yeah, there is, because I see them. Uh, okay, that is part of this though, right? But yeah, I think we're talking about two separate things yeah. somehow. Okay, then yeah. let's talk about the um, the fair that he had there three go, yeah. times last summer. That's what this is, this, <laughs> that's that's what this is about. There we go, yeah, that, that's a much better example. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And I don't think there's any process in place for that right now, which is what I think we're trying to address here, correct, Mike? Correct, yep, correct, correct. Now I'm looking at 45 days in duration so on page two, transient and seasonal sales. Is that what we're looking at here? So duration would be 45 days, comma, two times in 12 months. Is it 45 days or two times in 12 months? I think it could be 45 days twice is what that says. So 90 days out of, uh, out of the year, we can potentially have some uh, type of a transient sale going down there. <clears throat> so I don't know if that helps um, Commissioner Young or not, but it looks like it's, uh, it's for quite a lengthy process. For a, yes, a, thank you. I like the time. Now, does this... Uh cover other temporary sales like sidewalk sales or um, if someone puts a tent outside their business? 
I want to say the answer is yes and no. Um, sidewalk sales are a little different animal. Um, but if someone puts a tent outside their business, yes, though, this will be one of those aspects that relates to it because it has to have a direct, um, essentially have to have a direct relation to that business. So I, I couldn't go, for example, I couldn't go sit outside smokehouse and sell knitted scarves uh, without their permission. And since it, that has nothing to do with their business. Well, could they put uh, outdoor tables and sell their products outside? On sidewalks, sidewalks are a different permit. Uh, if you want to do something, especially downtown on sidewalks, it's a different process than this. Th this, I think, would be more tied towards private parking lots. Section four actually notes sidewalk sales. One of the things this governs. Okay. Let me see. Well, yeah. for instance, uh, bushes every once in a while will have their outdoor cooker and they'll cook up ribs of, and which you can buy. So. Yeah. So, so how Bill just mentioned, uh, prohibited sales. So it'd be part D sales of merchandise unrelated to principal use unless operated by or in support of uh, as a fundraiser or nonprofit. So other than that, I don't think you can do sidewalk sales via this. Any more questions? All right, there is a motion to uh, open the public hearing. Uh, Commissioner Young, would you move that? And uh, Commissioner Beardsley, would you second that? I move to open the public hearing. I'll second that. Katrina, would you take the vote? Yes, sir. Commissioner Beardsley? Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearbaugh? Aye. Steve Hart? Aye. Commissioner Half? Absent. Mayor Morrow? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. You have seven ayes and okay. two absent. Okay. It is, uh, motion is passed. All public comments to be heard are limited to three minutes per person. Mike or Katrina, anybody out there? Nope. Okay, uh, Commissioner Young and Commissioner Beardsley, would you make the motion to close the public hearing? I move to close the public hearing. I second that. Uh, Katrina, would you take the vote? Commissioner Beardsley? Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Commissioner, uh, sorry, Councilmember Gearball? Aye. Chief Hart? Aye. Commissioner Half? Absent. Mayor Marl? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. We have seven ayes and two absent. Motion is carried. Uh, any more questions or discussion? Commissioner Beardsley? Uh, no, thank you. Commissioner Carroll? No. Uh, Council Member Gearbaugh? Uh, I don't believe so. Chief Hart? No, sir. Uh, Commissioner Haft is absent. Miramar is absent. Commissioner Troika? No. Mr. Young? No. Mr. Fosdick? No. All right. There is a motion to recommend to the City Council that they adopt the ordinance number nine, I'm sorry, 819, to add a new section 6.16 to the Sling Zoning Ordinance and allow for temporary uses and structures and deletion of redundant provisions in section 512 and section 5.042. Commissioner Gearball, or uh, uh, Councilman Gearball, would you move that? And Chief Hart, would you second that? Um, move to recommend and to adopt. Second. Okay, Katrina, would you take the vote? Commissioner Beardsley? Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearball? Aye. 
Chief Hart. Aye. Commissioner Heft. Absent. Mayor Morrow. Absent. Commissioner Troika. Aye. Commissioner Young. Nay. And Commissioner Fosdick. Aye. Okay, you have six ayes, one no, and two absent. I believe it carries. Thank you. We'll move on to 20-17, Ordinance 820, to make consistent and regular make consistent the regulation of garage sales and business licensing with amendments to the city zoning code by deleting subsection 71-49e of chapter 71 blight and amending subsection 22-278 of chapter 22 business of the city of saline court code of ordinances mike would you kind of lead us off here Yes, sir. Th th this one's pretty straightforward. Th this is a, just a council action to pretty much clean up the ordinances. Uh, the one you just reviewed was for the zoning ordinance. This one's just for the general code of ordinances. So this is just some cleanup language for the previous ordinance. So if that one gets adopted by council, then this one has to get adopted as well. Okay. Uh, there is a motion to acknowledge receipt of the September 16, 2020 memo from interim City Manager Mike Green, Chief Hart, would you uh, move that? And Commissioner Young, would you second that? So moved. Second. Okay, Katrina, would you take the vote? Commissioner Beardsley? Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearbaugh? Aye. Chief Hart? Aye. Commissioner Heft? Absent. Mayor Morrow? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. Seven ayes and two absent. Okay, there's a motion to open the public hearing. Commissioner Young, would you move that? And Commissioner Carroll, would you uh, second that? Uh, I move to open the public hearing. Second. Uh, Katrina, would you do the vote? Take the vote. Commissioner Beardsley? Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearbaugh? Aye. Chief Hart? Aye. Commissioner Heft? Absent. Mayor Morrow? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. Seven ayes and two absent. Uh, motion is passed. All public comments to be heard limit to three minutes per person. Um, Mike or Katrina or anybody show up by now? I do not see anything. Okay, Commissioner Young, would you move to close the hearing and Carol, would you second that? I move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, Commissioner Beardsley? Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearbaugh? Aye. Chief Hart? Aye. Commissioner Huff is absent. Mayor Morrow? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. Seven ayes, two absent. Uh, motion is passed. All right, any questions? Commissioner Beardsley? No, thank you. Commissioner Carroll? No. Uh, Council Member Gearbaugh? Yes, um, question for Bill. There was no, this is, as Mike said, just clean up. There wasn't anything that was eliminated or changed? I don't, I don't even know if we saw this piece of it. And if so, I, it's been long enough, I don't recall, sorry. That's okay, thank you. Um, Chief Hart? No. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Heff, absent. Mayor Morrow, absent. Uh, Commissioner Troika? Aye. Oh, no question, sorry. <laughs> no question? All right, no question. Okay, that's good. Commissioner yeah. Young? No questions. Uh, 
Thank you. And Commissioner Fosdick, no questions. All right. There is a motion to recommend to the city council that they adopt ordinance number 820 to make a consistent of re regulation to make consistent of regulation of garage sale and business licensing with amendments to the zoning saline zoning code by deleting section 71-49E of chapter 71 blight and amending subsection 22 dash 27A of chapter 22 business of the city of Saline or the code sick Saline code of ordinances. Trico, would you would you move that and, and Dean Gearbaugh, would you would you second that? Uh, yes, so I move to recommend that we adopt uh, as stated in the agenda. Um, second, Mike, just a recommendation when this goes to council, make sure you have those documents and show where the highlighted are being striked out so that they understand exactly what's being removed out of the ordinances. Yep, I'll work with Mr. Forshee as he's the one that drafted them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Katrina, would you take the vote? Commissioner Beardsley? Yes. Commissioner Carroll? Yes. Council Member Gearbaugh? Yes. Chief Hart? Yes. Commissioner Heft? Absent. Mayor Morrow, absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. Seven ayes, two absent. Motion is passed. Let's go to new business. 20-18, application from Damian Farrell for a one-year final site plan extension for the Faradine Condominium Development located at 207 Monroe Street, Saline, Michigan, 48176, partial 1818-01170-015. Uh, Mike, would you care to comment on this? Um, Mike, before you comment, Mr. Chair, I have a conflict and so I will not be participating in this matter. Okay, thank you, um, Commissioner Troika. Yes, sir. So I'll take it from here. Uh, so this is, this is a big administrative thing. Uh, based on feedback from our attorneys, uh, it's recommended that we also get final site plan extensions approved as well. Uh, as noted in these memos for these next two items, actually, uh, City Council has already granted uh, PUD approvals for each of these projects. So it's just advice of Council that we also get official site plan uh, extension approvals as well. So that, that's what these are following up on. And as you can see, uh, we're recommending that they both get approved as both developers have done work on the properties, uh, but unfortunately due to COVID, they, they could not follow through on meeting the current site plan deadlines. So they're just seeking an extension. Okay. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Carroll and Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Carroll and, and Commissioner Young, would you move and second acknowledge receipt of the September 16, 2020 memo from in your interim city manager, Mike Green. Uh, so move. Second. Katrina, would you take the vote? Yes, sir. Um, just like, oh, let me God. change it to memos, to which will cover both of the items. Each item has their own action item number. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Beardsley? Nice try, Dan. Yeah, I. <laughs> Mr. Carroll. Aye. Council Member Gearbaugh. Aye. Chief Hart. Aye. Commissioner Heft, absent. Mayor Marl, absent. <laughs> Commissioner Troika is abstained. Commissioner Young. Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick. Aye. You have six ayes two absent and one abstain. Thank you, uh, motion passed. Any questions, uh, Commissioner Beardsley? No questions, thank you. Commissioner Carroll? No questions. Council Member Gearbaugh? Um, yeah, Mike and I earlier discussed, there's a concern or an issue with the PUD expires months before the extension does. So my recommendation would be that the PUD date 
and the site final site plan expansion be the same. So that way, if anything doesn't happen before, what is it, May 4th, I believe it is, or something like that, both issues have to be dealt with again in um, preparation for that extension. I don't want to have a core, I don't want to have a conflict between um, a date that goes longer than the PUD. So you want to add that to the motion then? Yeah, I think when what we, we there, instead of saying a one year final site plan, we would make it um, a date specific, which would be May 30th. May 30th. Okay. Mike and Katrina, can you add that? We'll just add that to the motion when we do it. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, what was I? Uh, Chief Hart, you have any questions? No, sir. Commissioner Hepp is absent. Mayor Marl is absent. Commissioner Troika, you're abstaining. Uh, yeah, you can't. Yep, abstaining. Thank you. Commissioner Young? No questions. And Commissioner Fosdick, no, no questions. Okay. Mr. Gearbaugh, would you move? And Chief Hart, would you uh, second to approve as the motion that we came on here, final site plan, as a date certain for parcel 18-18-01-170-015? Um, sure. Are there any comments from the developer or just check? Just yeah, I guess we should. Is the developer here? Is there any? I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it does not appear Mr. Damien is online. Yeah, he seems to walk away. So um, I'll move. I'll go ahead and move to approve um, the extension to May thirtieth, twenty twenty one. Second. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Katrina, would you take the vote? Commissioner Beardsley. Aye. Commissioner Carroll. Commissioner Carroll. Aye. Councilmember Gearball? Aye. Chief Hart? Aye. Councilmember Heft? Sorry, Commissioner Heft, absent. Mayor Morrow? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Abstain. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. Six ayes, two absent, and one abstain. Thank you. Motion is passed. We'll move to 2019 application from Nicholas Delfino for the one year PUD final site plan extension for the Lair Farms development located at 666675 Maple Road, Saline, Michigan 48176. Parcel number L1230300001005. Mike, same thing here? Yes, sir. Sa same exact thing there. Looking for a uh, site plan extension of one year for this project uh, due to COVID and similar to everything else that's been extended this year, mainly due to COVID. And, and we do have Tom Cover on the line from Midwestern Consulting. He, he's uh, one of the engineers for this project to answer any questions you guys may have. Okay. Um, the motion to acknowledge receipt of the September 16, 2020 memo for, from Interim City Mike Green. Bill, would you move that and keep our Sure, I'll move a, that. I'll move that we acknowledge receipt of the September 16th memo from Interim City Manager Green. Second. Thank you. Okay, Katrina, would you take the vote? Commissioner Beardsley. Aye. Commissioner Carroll. Aye. Councilmember Gearbaugh. Aye. Chief Hart. Aye. Commissioner Heft is absent. Mayor Marl, absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. Two ayes, uh, sorry, seven ayes, two absent. Motion carries. Hey, Tom, if you're there, do you want to, do you want to say anything about, about this? Well, I'll just thank you everybody for uh, considering this action tonight to extend the um, final site plan PUD for the project. Um, 
we are moving forward and getting uh, things in order for a start uh, next year. Um, and we really appreciate the opportunity uh, and the, the positive result here. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Are there any uh, questions from the commissioners? Commissioner Beardley? No, thank you. Mr. Carroll? Uh, yeah, when will this uh, expire? We have it for September 23rd, 2021. Uh, it's not recommended to go longer than a year for site plan extensions. So and we're trying to give. Yeah, and their PUD goes until December 2nd. So one year yep. extension would be fine. Yep. Okay. Uh, Council member Gearwell. Um, just maybe for Mike and we talked about, you know, how we're gonna handle Maple Road next year and the sewer okay. replacement and everything. Is there any coordinating that we need to do in terms of how you start your construction next year in that project? Yeah, that, that'll be something uh, in the near future. Jeff, Jeff, Mr. Fordyce and I will work on and work with Tom to try to start coordinating that schedule to see how their timeline is going to line up with what we hopefully potentially want to do. So we'll work over that over the next few weeks. Yeah, just something I wanted as long as you're doing this extension that we were looking forward to that because it gives us another year of um, hopefully delay so that we can find the funding to complete that project. Thank you, that's it. Okay, um, Chief Hart? No questions. Commissioner Heft, absence. Miramaro, absence. Uh, Commissioner Troika? No questions. Commissioner Young? No questions. And Commissioner Fosdick, no questions. Okay, uh, there is a motion to approve the one-year PUD final site plan extension for the Lair Farms development located at 6675 Maple Road, Saline, Michigan, 4176, parcel number L1230300010100. Uh, Commissioner Young, would you move that? And Commissioner Troika, would you uh, second that? I move to approve the one-year PUD final site plan extension for the Lair Farms development. I second. Thank you. Uh, any more discussion? Katrina, will you take the vote? Commissioner Beardsley? Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearball? Aye. Chief Hart? Aye. Commissioner Heft is absent. Mayor Morrow, absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Posdick? Aye. Seven ayes, two absent. Um, motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, we have, we have one last discussion item. Uh, Lodi Township proposed master plan amendment. Mike, you wanna give a little rundown on that? It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Self and I, I think you guys did this right before I actually came to the city as uh, Lodi Township was actually looking to rezone that entire island. Uh, but there is that Lodi Township island on North Ann Arbor Street, and they are looking to change their master plan for this parcel. Uh, right now, technically, I'm pretty sure it's zoned agricultural, even though there are houses and everything there. Uh, but this would essentially change that zoning to residential office is what they're calling it. So naturally, whenever you change master plans or zoning ordinances, you have to send these letters out and it gives us as the neighboring community a chance to respond. Uh, so that, that's what this discussion item is for, uh, to have you guys let Katrina and I know if you want to respond, and if so, how do you want us to respond? So if, if you, we can come to a little consensus tonight, we'll draft that letter of how you ever you guys want. If you want us to draft a letter and we'll get it off over to Lodi Township. And I can give some background if you want, Scott. Yeah, let's um, let's hear it because I'm I, I'm concerned with the change in that. <laughs> they're, they're professional building. Could they just put a bank in there? I guess that's the first thing that comes to my mind. I mean, <laughs> with the drive-through. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's one of the concerns where we had. Um, I mean, from council's yeah. perspective, and even the issues was that potentially when they wanted to rezone it last time, it would be that possible use. This time wow. it's supposed to be low intensity, but the question is how, what is defined as low intensity? Looking at there at Lodi's 
um, zoning document to see what specifically are permitted uses. Um, a bigger issue on it is if I look at that document, it appears they're wanting to rezone more than just that island, Mike, because there's there's a number of islands that are across the street from that too. When you look at yeah, there's there's homes there. So there's three parcels that are on the east side of North Ann Arbor Street that I think they want to include in this. And of course, from my perspective and some of the members of council is it's all surrounded by, um, at this current time, surrounded by residential. Um, this type of use for my concern is that it's creating an island within our own um, city, um, use of residential, but it's also allowing a use on property that do not pay taxes yet um, receive a number of our services from the city. So there's no incentive for this to be brought into the city as a, um, uh, no longer as an island, but to actually be annexed. And we've been wanting to push these properties to be brought into the city so that they no longer are that concern at this point. They do pay triple water, but it doesn't address the true issue, which is our taxes and the authority over the properties and zoning and all of that. So from my concern and what I've been putting forward is that any kind of rezoning on this property um, that changes it from the residential use that it currently is and surrounded by is inappropriate. Yeah, and, and seeing that, Dean, I, I, I do have some major concerns with that. Um, you know, I guess I'd, I would have liked to have kept it sort of kind of residential the way it is but I don't know what kind of a say we have and so forth. I guess we could, you know, spend money. If something really drastic comes in there, the city could be in, spend mega bucks fighting it, but God, I don't want to get in that boat either. Well, one of the things would be is to help us try and establish our case for annexation and to get this property brought into the city so that it can be um, appropriately realigned. It's so far into the city at this point in time, it really, it needs to come in. It should not be out in the, um, should not yep. be an island any longer. And, and the, I, can't, I can't agree more, and I, and I hope they attack it that way. But anybody else have any questions or concerns? So are, are we saying uh, that we would like to send a letter expressing concern? Is that the uh, directive? I think, I, think, I think we should. Um, and express those concerns explicitly. And I mean, that, that's the best I think we can do, but. Yeah, that, and that it doesn't match our master plan yeah. with surrounds, completely surrounds that piece of property. Yeah, the standards we would apply would be, what would we do if it was ours? And that's not what we would do. Not in that location. Yeah. Even though there may be some grandfathered uses, but they don't apply for the overall um, zoning we kept that to the north of Waterworks, I think, with professional business and the, and the rental property, if I recall. Correct. And then we rezoned that one parcel to multifamily. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, I have a motion to excuse the absences of the uh, Commissioner Heft and Mayor Morrow. Troika, would you move that? And Young, would you second that? Uh, move to excuse the absence of um, Commissioner Heft and Mayor Morrow. Second. Very good. Katrina, would you take the vote? Sorry. Commissioner Beardsley? That's all right. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearball? Aye. Chief Hart? Aye. Commissioner Heft? Absent. Mayor Morrow? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fosdick? Aye. Seven ayes, two absent. Motion carried. Okay, there's a motion to adjourn the meeting at 7.57 p.m. Uh, Commissioner Young, would you move that? And Commissioner Troika, would you second that? I move to uh, end the meeting at 7.57. And I second. Katrina? 
Would you take the vote? Commissioner Beardsley? Aye. Commissioner Carroll? Aye. Councilmember Gearbaugh? Aye. Chief Hart? Aye. Commissioner Heft? Absent. <laughs> Mayor Marl? Absent. Commissioner Troika? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. And Commissioner Fostick? Aye. Seven eyes. Thank you absent. all very much. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Very, very much. Thank Thanks you. all. Have a good weekend. Take care. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Katrina. Thanks again. All right. Bye-bye.